What's up everyone and welcome to the very first episode of Marvel Month. That's right, it's that time of year when for one straight month we focus on the best and most relevant content that Marvel has to offer. Well, except for live episodes, of course. But this year's Marvel Month is kicking off alongside the release of a little movie you may or may not have heard of called Avengers Endgame. It's a super indie low-budget movie starring a bunch of unknowns that no one's probably gonna see. Yeah, um, I'm gonna have to go ahead and sort of disagree with you there. All joking aside, this is the culmination of 10 years of Marvel storytelling and the launch point for a brand new era in the MCU. It's easily the biggest superhero movie to have hit the big screen to this point, and in reality one of the biggest movies of all time, period. So what better way to celebrate that than with a slew of Marvel themed episodes all month long. But we're not stopping there. During the next month, we're going just as big and doing something incredibly special for Marvel Month. It's quite literally one of the biggest things we've done up until now, and we'll be announcing all the glorious details tomorrow, April 25th. Please believe me when I tell you, you're not gonna wanna miss that. I was genuinely stunned when I found out about this myself. It's still kinda nuts to me. So stay tuned tomorrow afternoon, April 25th, right here on the Variant Channel. Now let's officially get Marvel Month started with our list of the MCU's 10 most powerful heroes. Kicking off our list is none other than Groot. Groot is a sentient tree from the species known as the Floral Colossus. His speech is limited to three words. I, and Am, and Groot, exclusively in that order, as Rocket once said. Groot possesses super strength and can lift incredible amounts of weight and take on several people at a time with ease. But even more so than his strength, he's incredibly durable. His entire body is made up of very strong dense wood, which in turn allows him to sustain a crap ton of damage from explosions, firearms, and all sorts of melee weapons. Groot also has the ability to change the shape of his body in almost any way he wants, like creating a bulletproof branch shield or creating vine tentacles and twig spikes to attack people. Mix that with having a pretty decent healing factor and the fact that a portion of his arm was literally used as the handle for Thor's Stormbreaker, and you have one badass superhero tree. Next up is the King of Wakanda, Black Panther. Like all Black Panthers before him, T'Challa's enhanced strength comes from having swallowed the heart-shaped herb. He's so strong that a hit from him sends most of his opponents flying through the air, and he was even able to push back Winter Soldier's bionic arm. But what makes him such a threat is the combination of all his abilities like enhanced speed, being able to run just as fast as police cars as seen in Civil War, enhanced agility, reflexes, and stamina. He too also has a healing factor, although nothing like that of Deadpool or the Hulk, but still good nonetheless. But don't worry, his abilities keep going. He's a master martial artist, tactician, acrobat, and has a genius level intellect along with incredible tech. The most common of which is his vibranium claws and suit. His vibranium suit is borderline indestructible, protecting him from nearly all physical injury as it absorbs all vibrations and kinetic energy. As for his claws, they can almost cut through anything, even cap shield. In the end, it's the mix of Black Panther's skills, smarts, and tech made by his sister Shuri that makes him easily one of the MCU's most powerful heroes. Next up is my favorite hero in the MCU, and that would be Captain America. Off the bat, some of you may be saying, really, Captain America? He's on this list? You may be thinking, sure, he's just as good a fighter and combatant as Black Panther, but he doesn't have Panther's genius level intellect and crazy cool tech that gives him that extra edge to be ranked with the big dogs. But true Captain America fans know he has something better. Besides having enhanced strength, reflexes, speed, and all that jazz due to the super soldier serum, along with being a master martial artist, spy, marksman, tactician, and so on, what really gives Captain America the edge is his abilities mixed with his incredible amount of heart and passion to do what's right. Steve Rogers doesn't know the meaning of give up, as he's the embodiment of what a hero should be. For instance, one of the best scenes in the entire MCU is when before Rogers even had the super soldier serum, he jumps on what he thought was a live grenade to save his fellow soldiers while everyone else just ran away. It was such a powerful scene and just showed you that it isn't the powers and abilities that make the hero, but rather the man himself. In short, Cap is no Hulk or Vision, but his never give up, never say die attitude is what makes him so powerful and gives him the advantage in my opinion. At number 7 we have Iron Man. Tony Stark is just an average dude, except he's not. As he said to Cap in Avengers, if you take away his suit of armor, he's still a genius, billionaire, playboy, and philanthropist. But you put all that together with his countless suits of armor, and you have one incredibly powerful superhero. Tony Stark's advanced armors basically allow him to do anything his brain can come up with. From his Hulkbuster armor that allowed him to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Hulk in Age of Ultron, to his nanotech armor in Infinity War that gave him cluster cannons, nanotech shields, and his trademark repulsor blasts. At this point, 
some of you may be like, true, but didn't Captain America beat him in Civil War? And the answer to that is yes, but it wasn't a one-on-one -on -one fight. It was Bucky and Cap versus Iron Man. In fact, when Iron Man was starting to beat Cap by analyzing his fight patterns, Bucky distracted Iron Man by grabbing his leg before he could give the final blow, allowing Cap to grab Iron Man from behind and squeak out a win. Anyway, what I'm saying is Iron Man is a walking powerhouse that has weapons the military only dreams of. Rounding out the bottom five at number six is the Hulk, which I know might be shocking as the saying goes, Hulk is the strongest there is. Unfortunately, that's far from the case in the MCU. The MCU Hulk, especially in the latter half of the MCU, has been shown to be significantly weaker than its comic book counterpart. Hulk is supposed to be utter brute force, where the madder he gets, the stronger he gets, which was portrayed great in the first Avengers. After that though, his strength and durability has been a bit all over the place. In any case, he's still the Hulk, meaning he's a heavy hitter no matter how you slice it. I mean, the dude put a stop to the Chitauri warship with a single punch. He also tried to solo Surtur in Ragnarok. He didn't beat him as Thor told him to stop, but he also wasn't hurt either. Besides his brute strength, the Hulk is easily one of the most durable characters in the MCU. And though I wish the Hulk was given more to do as the Hulk and not just as Bruce Banner, there's no denying the Hulk is definitely someone you bring out when the crap hits the fan. Hence the mic drop line, we have a Hulk. the top five is the Scarlet Witch. What makes the Scarlet Witch so powerful? Well, I'm about to tell you. First and foremost, she possesses psionic energy manipulation. This means she could use energy blasts, streams, waves, and bolts of her own psionic telekinetic energy, which in turn allows her to hit, push, pull, or blow away her opponents, sometimes with enough force to destroy them completely. She could also use her powers to fly and create extremely powerful force fields. And if that didn't make her powerful enough, she has telepathy and mental and emotional manipulation, which we saw her using in Age of Ultron to screw with the Avengers' heads before she would turn sides and become good. In fact, she's the one who made the Hulk go AWOL in Age of Ultron, which forced Tony Stark to pull out the Hulkbuster armor. To push the point even further, she was able to subdue Vision by tapping into his Mind Stone and then pretty much force pushing him God only knows how deep into the Earth. Yes, I know that was a Star Wars reference, but hey, the mouse owns that franchise too. Just missing the top three is Vision. Vision is a perfect hybrid between organic and inorganic material. His entire body is a mix between a synthetic simulacrum of organic tissue and vibranium, all of which are enhanced by the cosmic powers of the Mind Stone in his forehead to function as a living body. He has superhuman strength, the limits of which we don't really know, but let's just say he's freaking strong. Being a sentient android made of vibranium, he could also further his strength to crazy stupid levels by increasing his density, which changes his weight and mass. Control over his density also allows him to phase through objects, which also furthers his invulnerability. Being an AI also gives Vision a genius level intellect, but he could also fly and draw power from his Mind Stone to shoot energy blasts from his forehead. He was also able to hack into Ultron's programming. Oh, and did I forget to mention, he's worthy to wield Thor's hammer. Yeah, so if all that wasn't enough, he could also use Thor's hammer. What I'm saying is, Vision is just a little bit powerful. the top three is Doctor Strange. Strange is a master sorcerer and protects the New York Sanctum. With the power of the Time Stone around his neck inside the Eye of Agamotto and the use of mystical arts, there's pretty much nothing Strange can't do. For instance, because of his mastery of the mystical arts, he knows countless spells, like protection, binding, and duplication spells, just to name a few, as well as the ability of transmutation. He can also fly, dimensional warp, teleport, travel through dimensions, and astral project his own body. He's also a genius and an expert martial artist, but again, his true power lies within the mystic arts. I mean, there's a good chance he will be the one who saves the fallen heroes in Endgame, as he might have done some sort of spell in Infinity War that we will see save our heroes in Endgame. In any case, we have only begun to see the full extent of Doctor Strange's power, and something tells me we're gonna see a lot more in Endgame. Runner up on our list is none other than the God of Thunder Thor. Now depending how Endgame plays out, Strange could end up being more powerful than Thor. But as of now, Thor takes the runner up spot and here's why. Thor has easily displayed the most amount of power and feats in the MCU thus far. And quite frankly would be number one if it weren't for the recent introduction of a character to the MCU. Thor is the son of Odin and is worthy to possess the power of Thor, which grants him nigh invulnerability. In fact, he's so invulnerable in Infinity War, Thor endured the full power of a dying star. If you don't know how impressive that is, I don't know what else to tell you. He also has super strength, which has been shown to be on par and even sometimes greater than the Hulk. He also has super speed, reflexes, stamina, agility, and longevity. On top of all that, he has elemental manipulation. 
so he can control weather storms and lightning, which in turn lets him conjure and control electricity. He also probably has the best healing factor in the MCU, at least from what we've been shown thus far. And of course, he has his trusty mystical hammer Mjolnir, and more recently, his new hammer Stormbreaker, both of which he could wreck shop with and even control when he's not holding them. Thor has way more powers and abilities, but I'd be here all day listing them. But to sum it up, the pure fact that if he just would have aimed for Thanos' head in Infinity War, he would have defeated him by himself tells you just how powerful this God of Thunder is. Coming in at number one is Captain Marvel. I'm sure that comes as no surprise to most of you, even though as of the date of this episode, we have only seen her in one movie. Regardless, we already know she's the most powerful superhero in the MCU. Not because of the feats she's displayed in her solo movie, but because the president of Marvel Studios, Kevin Feige, has told us this on several occasions. Like in this interview with the Inquisitor, where he said, quote, She's one of the most powerful and one of the most popular characters in our comics, and will be the most powerful character in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. End quote. So that being the case, without even having to list any of her powers, we know she's the most powerful MCU hero and character. That's not to say it would be our vote, but lover or hater, that's what the president of Marvel Studios has said. And at the end of the day, he makes the rules for these movies and universe. And honestly, it's pretty much on track with what Marvel has been doing with her in the comics too. Just like in the MCU, her powers are pretty much the entire kitchen sink. Captain Marvel has super strength, durability, speed, agility, and reflexes, along with flight, power augmentation, exothermic manipulation, energy channeling, self-sustenance, longevity, and cosmic energy manipulation as she became infused with the Tesseract, giving her a bunch of photonic abilities, such as her immensely powerful photon blast. And to put the cherry on top of the sundae, she can go binary, which we saw at the end of Captain Marvel taking her already crazy powers to an absurd level, of which we've yet to see the ceiling, but we're sure to get a better idea in Endgame. But that's our list, my comic comrades. What are your thoughts? I'm sure many of you would have a different list, so let us know what yours would be in the comment section down below. As comic fans, we're always on the lookout for the next great story, but with our constantly busy schedules, it's not always easy to stop and read some of the titles we want to get to. Thankfully, that's where Audible comes in. As a member, I could choose one audiobook and two Audible originals every month. That's a lot of content every month to start building a solid digital library. And considering Audible has the largest selection of audiobooks on the planet, the options are nearly endless. I use it to listen to books or graphic novels while on the go, working at my desk, or yes, even while taking a shower. Hey, you gotta fit it in wherever you can, people. Another thing I love is that on the Audible app, I can control the narration speed, so if I think the reader is going a bit slow for my taste, I could just speed that sucker up and boom, it's like giving them some digital caffeine. Anyway, Audible is offering you guys a free 30-day trial membership, including a free book and two free Audible originals to try for yourself. Just use our link audible.com forward slash variant or text the word variant to 500, 500 and just like that, you'll have free Audible goodness headed straight to your brain box. And if you're looking for a good title to start with, I highly recommend Marvel Comics The Untold Story by Sean Howe. It's a deep dive into the long history of the comic book publishing giant, including a detailed look at how Stan Lee and Jack Kirby partnered to create one of the most loved superhero rosters in geekdom. It's an incredibly fascinating peek behind the Marvel curtain and a perfect fit to go along with today's launch of Marvel Month here on Variant. You can start listening to Marvel Comics The Untold Story for free right now, plus two Audible Originals with your 30-day free trial. Just click the link in the description below or go to audible.com forward slash variant or text V-A-R-I-A-N-T to 500-500 to get started. And when you do, be sure to share what title you're listening to with the rest of the Variant Nation. First up for Wednesday, April 24th, we have Thanos issue one. Thanos is dead, killed by the deadliest assassin in the galaxy, his daughter Gamora. But before their relationship came to a bloody end, how did it begin? Here we have Action Comics issue 1010. In this issue, Clark and Lois Lane go undercover to find out who is behind all the attacks on the top secret and underground organizations of the DC Universe. Now we have Star Wars Vader Dark Visions issue 3. Darth Vader, a name that strikes fear in the hearts of countless across the galaxy, but there is one lonely heart that beats just for him. And this issue will show what it's like to be in love with Darth Vader. And finally we have The Flash 69. Riot in Central City, Trickster has pulled out all the stops in his assault on Flash's hometown. And the Scarlet Speedster is powerless to crack Trickster's code. And that brings another episode of Variant to a close, but remember to tune in right back here tomorrow on our channel for our big announcement. Trust me, you are not going to want to miss that. Also, be sure to check out Audible in the description below. If you click that link, you'll be able to get 30 days for free to listen to some nice books. Other than that, be sure to check out our Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Links for that is also in the description, but I'll see you guys next time when I talk about all things comics.